Online here with the Fightly Report, and we want to introduce our first guest on the show. He is the first guest to be a part of Elite Fight Night return to the Real Cat Stadium August 20th in Gary, Indiana, and he will fight Jordan Wiggins at Elite Fight Night title time, Saturday, August 20th. Uh, fighting in the welterweight division is one in four, training at Dominion MMA in Oswego, Illinois, <laughs> as well. And Brian, we welcome you on the show. We hope everything is going well with you. Thank you, Sean. It's always an honor to be on your show. I appreciate the time. Um, and yeah, yeah, finally, uh, third time's the charm, right? So yeah. let's get in there, finally keep this uh, momentum going that I started in my original camps. But um, yeah, I'm excited to be in there. And I'm sure you were lost for words when you found out that the opportunity to fight the Steel City Showdown 3 wasn't happening. I, I didn't know actually until you told me in person because I thought I thought you were just getting ready for the fights and uh, Cooper Brandt pulled out I believe it was on the Thursday or Friday before. So what did you do to stay, you know, motivated? What what did uh, Jesse Nunes tell you? Uh, did he guarantee you the next spot on on the next card as well? Did that help? Yeah, uh, Jesse and uh, Mike Aguirre, they they jumped on it to try to get me on like some. 45ers that maybe were missing opponents like that would go up and wait and I'd meet them there. I just told them, yeah, if we could find something short notice, but you know, Sean, fighting me on like a day's notice, who's doing that? Like regardless of the record I have right now, like it, it's, so I have my fingers crossed, but I wasn't surprised. So um, the motivation just came from uh, just maintaining the shape I was in and maybe surpassing it and, um, and being ready for whatever's next. So I'm no stranger to being patient, as you know. I was already out for like almost four years from right. recovery, right? So it was just another uh, another bit of patience I had to pull out. And uh, yeah, so I'm just staying uh, motivated to move forward and finally show skills and, you know, redeem myself a little bit. For sure. I mean, talk about your opponent when you got the call to fight him, Jordan Wiggins from Maximus Boitai. Um, talk about yeah. taking him on. I know his record isn't the best, but how do you feel about uh, him? Because he is two and seven, five losses in a row. Yeah, yeah, I have, um, I know what that's like because I got my four in a row and mm -hmm. uh, man, on paper, that looks so, it looks rough on paper, man. And sometimes these athletes, like, like I know personally, like we're better than a lot of our records show, but really at the end of the day, you just got to go in there and make it happen. Um, Jordan Wiggins, um, that matchup, I, didn't expect it to, to come up. Um, me and him are already friends on Facebook. I don't think we've, we've never talked in person, um, but I've seen him fight before. I know he's seen me fight before. And um, to have a record like that, to lose a bunch in a row and all that gets stopped um, even, um, that'll, that'll weigh on uh, somebody. So I know he works as a coach. I know um, taking that time off, I know he's taking it seriously. I'm not going to put it past sure. him. because Jordan Wiggins, we saw years ago, the one I saw, He's got to be a better version of that, especially if he wants to keep doing the sport. I know he took it serious, especially yeah. if he's training at Maximus Muay Thai or Richard Abrahams at those guys are beasts. I know those guys, um, mm -hmm. they train hard, they go hard. Um, that's a gym I respect very much. So I'm going to have my eyes on him. I'm going to be very uh, prepared and ready because like I said, I respect that gym. Richard trains his guys very hard. Definitely. And uh, yeah, I was at his last fight against James Bennett. That was a big first round finish for, for James over him. But obviously, you know, I'm sure he, he's, he's, he's training hard. He, he's getting ready every day. And they've, they've went back and reviewed everything that went wrong. How did, uh, how did James finish him? Do you know? I, I actually don't even know about that one. Um, I might've been doing interviews. Uh, he was, it uh, was uh, by punches in the first round. Okay. I think he, I think he got him up. He got him in the, uh, on, from the top position and start raining out punches, but it was such a long time ago. Yeah, it's been a while, yeah. right? So, yeah. okay, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, uh, I know, uh, like I said, I believe Wiggins took this time off. Um, I know, um, to, when it t t comes to time off and being away on a losing streak, you just want to get better. You, the drive is there, motivation won't always be there. It's easy to get discouraged, but mm -hmm. if he's anything like me or like any of these other fighters, you take time off, you look to assess yourself and get your skills better and sharper. Um, and that's what I've been doing. And I'm sure that's what he's done to take a fight against me like this. So 
it's going to be something interesting. Not sure what to expect from him. I just know um, I expect some improved striking. I know he's got some wrestling and his background and everything. So just being prepared for all of it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, we saw, you know, in the last event, you know, Maximus uh, Moitai coming out pretty, pretty good. <laughs> pretty pretty yeah. well on top. Yeah, that was clean. That was a clean. Uh, yeah, I forgot his name, but that was a clean knockout. He got me and Tyler were talking about that one. Um, yeah, highlight, man. Highlight reels. That gym, they, they bring out highlight reels. And I know Richard Abraham retired, so he's focusing a lot more on the coaching aspect. Um, I know he commits a lot of time with these guys. So I expect uh, I expect a battle. That's for sure. Yeah, Slate Passmore. That was he had the big first yeah. round finish. Yeah, Slate. Yeah, that guy's a beast. I've seen him fight a few times. Yeah, he's a big guy too for his weight class. I think mean, he's like two hundred five, yeah. right? And he looks really like a heavyweight. Um, oh, yeah. So, yeah. So moving on, I mean, I know MMA is definitely not a pickup sport. Like it's not something you can let go for a few months, come back and pick it up on your leisure. And they're like, oh, that's we've been done for six months let's 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 go spar with each other you know what i mean it doesn't work like that this is a dedication you know at, at uh unseen you know president levels i mean obviously professional athletes and all other sports have habits so you know talk about that yeah um that one thing i i forgot who said it i don't know if it was like michael bisman cruz but um i know dominic cruz when he was gone from all his injuries he was talking about like he doesn't believe in ring rust like that's just something that was made up um, other fighters have said a uh, Chael son. And I believe that's what it was. I was watching his podcast and he was saying how time off does not do fighters any favors. Like, mm -hmm. like when he said that it's not more so like, you know, being like, uh, your timing and everything. Sparring is one thing. And then the actual fight where it's all hundred percent coming at you, that's a whole nother thing. So that's something I think about like being away from it once, which I was away for a while. And then I was away again after the veal fight, um, being away from it, it can mess with your head mentally. And uh, one thing you got to do is have the right people around you, train hard and really focus on your mental game when it comes to that, because I know I'm good. I know um, I got it in me still. I know how I feel when I'm on 100%, when I'm on even 70%. I know how I'm feeling. And uh, really the whole idea for my comeback, like I was saying before uh, last year, was um, just going in on my terms because um, I was taken away from it earlier than I wanted and having to recover and, and, you know, heal up. So at this point, I just got to make sure I'm grateful for the opportunity, not just going in there to, to, you know, go through the motions, but going in there and enjoying myself and enjoying um, the ability to do something I have a passion for. Uh, once again, when I was told I wasn't going to do it again. So just being, keeping that all in perspective and uh, maybe having a good night, a good one. For sure. For sure. And like, you know, I know Dan Milrainy, he'll be in your, in your corner again, right? I believe so. Yeah. yeah. I still got to talk to him because our schedules are so all over the place, man, okay. with the coaching. Um, but yeah, Dan Moran, he's, he's my coach. And I got some other guys I've been working with at Dominion um, that have been helping me uh, sharpen some skills. Uh, Nico Jefferson, Mr. Boom Boom, he's yes. been trained with me and sparring with me um, pretty regularly. It's cool mm -hmm. to have that because he just knocked this dude, sent him to the another realm recently yeah. with his uh, knockout power, man. And he's always been known for that. So. It's cool to train with the guy I fought you know, uh, years ago. Yeah, for sure. And you also, Tyler Scott is uh, weighing his next opponent. So he's kind of like in, in your situation that you found yourself a couple months ago. Yeah, I told him, like, yeah, it's fun, right? Yeah, I, I went through that, too. It's it's um, not surprising. It's just part of the game. But, um, yeah, Tyler, he's been looking good. He's been giving me some really good rounds. Um, I got a little bit of a sore rib from him just from the other day. Wow. But me and him, we've been we've been tearing into each other, and just preparing for uh, what's next for us, man. And it's motivating to see the fights he's had and the success he's had um, while I've been waiting to get my hands on somebody. Definitely. And then, uh, you know, obviously, you see women's MMA has really grown and, and it seems like there's representatives of every gym. Are you guys looking to have that in uh, Dominion? I'm not sure if you have anyone yet that's that's trained there. We do division. have a woman fighter. Her name is uh, Andy Moore. She's awesome. Um, I've uh, I've been around. She's had um, some uh, Muay Thai fights. She fought uh, someone from Steve Colon's gym. Uh, went to a decision. She lost a decision on it, but uh, she came back and won her next fight. Um, she'll be looking to fight coming up uh, September, and uh, we'll have some more guys uh, fighting from our team as well. Uh, Joey Chacon, uh, Richie Napier. He's going to be back out there. Nice. Um, we're gonna have um, we're gonna have some uh, fighters coming up and um, showing out a little bit. So just keep an eye out for Dominion MMA. 
um, and some of uh, some new faces and some familiar faces too as well. For sure. And then talk about, you know, preparing for success in a training camp. Like, who do you like to, to, to have there with you? Um, I like, uh, as long as the team is there, um, we'll reach out to fighters, like local guys, getting them out here. Um, I reached out recently to Nick Hawkins. Um, well, he okay. reached out to me and I would like to get some rounds with him. That guy's been killing it recently too. Um, just working with tough guys and, um, Honestly, just when it comes to fighting, one thing that I tell uh, my fighters and uh, guys I'm uh, helping build is uh, don't worry so much about what your opponent's going to do. Worry about what you're going to do and what you're good at. A lot of people get stuck with um, what's this guy going to do? What's he going to throw at me? How do I react to this? When it's really about what you're going to do and the uh, sure. confidence you have in your skills, and, you know, who you have around you that help build you up to opportunity so i've been taking my own advice so i can be an example to those guys that we uh coach out there yeah definitely i mean i think that's that, that that's the best thing you can do right just get those trusted people with you that you know aren't spying from i'm not saying that happens that, that regularly but you know they, they might be sp spying from another gym or your opponent's gym, yeah right? yeah, <laughs> yeah. I always yeah, wonder how happen. that worked, you know what I mean? Because it's like you got to be so careful who you bring in and who you're exposing yourself to for your training. Yeah, I've got, I've got some funny stories I'll get into one day, but um, we're like, you know me, I know everybody. So mm -hmm. I've had buddies fight each other from multiple gyms. I've had people stop talking to me because they thought I was rooting for the guy against them when really right. I'm like that in-between guy, like, oh, yeah, that's a good fight, like, that's just what happens. I, I guess I'm personable, um, introvert or not. I, I know everyone locally. So I'll have buddies fight each other from time to time. Um, and uh, I'll be fighting guys that I was buddies with from here and there. And it's all part of the yeah. sport, man. It doesn't matter. It could be my it could be my own uncle in there. I'm still going to throw hands and make yeah. the best of it. A couple of years, a few years ago, I, I'll tell you a story. I stopped predicting uh at, uh, regional MMA fights and I'll tell you why because I predicted the wrong guy to win and boy did I hear back from it later it was actually a Bellator prelim oh and, uh, what and, match uh, was it it was um, oh, what's his name I can't believe it, it's, it, he's, he's now in uh, Bellator MMA and he, and he won he trains with uh, BFS fight uh, uh, you know uh, Valley Flow striking yeah, yeah, Train, yeah, he guys, trains yeah. there, um, and basically he took on another guy that was, um, man, I can't, um, Jackson. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, the, he he used to he used to, Corey Jackson, your, your former your former opponent. It was, was it um was, was it a deal? Was it a, no? It wasn't like any deal, but I I had just said it on like we did a, a broadcast, and I was predicting the prelims for Bellator. And yeah. Corey Jackson, I had predicted Corey Jackson to win that fight, and he lost. And so when, uh, when he, so no, I think I know who you're talking about. It must have been because Corey Jackson fought a deal of uh, Ben Jelani. Yeah, um, a deal. You're right, a deal. Yeah, right. yeah, so, yeah, it was a yeah, deal. Yeah, yeah. It was a deal, Ben Jelani, and yeah. a deal told me on the way over, like, he's like, you doubt me, you doubt me. And I was sitting behind. In media row behind Juliana Pena and and uh, <laughs> well, he's Herrick. They looked over and were like, "What is that about?" And I'll never forget because uh, what's his, Ed Soares was sitting next to them, and he's like, "Fighters are like elephants." He said something like that. He looked over at me and said, never "Fighters, forget. Are like, yeah, never forget." <laughs> never forget. No, yeah, I've been there so, before too. I've been yeah, in that I've, situation. And, and so I do have my favorites, but I definitely stay away from like predicting like anything that's a regional fight. You know what I mean? As much as I was the podcast and talk about it, I'd, I'd rather talk about like the action or what we expect in a fight or, you know, the results of the fight. Yeah, I've, uh, I, I have a funny example of that, um, you, you know, the fighter Sam Gucci. Yes. Um, I, when I fought him years ago, um, I had people talking about that one a lot, talk because his jujitsu is amazing, right? That guy, yeah. um, he's a monster with the transitions, the triangles, armbars, whatever. He's a monster, and I was I overheard, um, and I was messaged by some people. I won't put their names out there. I won't right, even right. put you guys, but like, hey, 
you got to stay off the ground with Sam. Don't go on his guard. Don't uh, don't mess with that. Like, I mean, you're a stand up guy. So in my fight, you've seen it. I made an yes. effort to be in his guard and and throw punches and defend mm-hmm. everything that I saw just to make a point, which usually in a fight, you don't want to be stubborn. You want to just go in there and do what you got to do. But I know my skills. So I was like, all right, here we go. I'm in his guard, defend this, go for that. Show people like, oh, I do this too. Like I also did jujitsu. Like, so it's like one of those things, man. Fighters, they have their like yeah. that mentality where it's like, oh, you think this? Let me mm-hmm. prove you wrong. And usually, yeah. usually, you know, it could play out good, but it could also play out bad. We're in a crazy sport. Um, but yeah, it's just something about the mentality, man. When you're competitive, just can't help it. I get it. Definitely, definitely. And then if anyone hasn't been to, uh, the, you know, the Real Cat Stadium, which is it's just a fun environment to watch MMA. Yeah, big, yeah. The and big I lighting that, structure so. and, you know, I mean, that often gets overlooked. Yeah, I was very, um, wasn't the happiest when I was at the arena this past show as right. a spectator. It was not the same, man. I, sure. uh, I was. I was thirsty, man. I was thirsty for, you know, getting my hand raised. So that fire has led me through another camp. That fire has led me to where I'm at now. And uh, fingers crossed, I believe Wiggins will show up. Um, I believe that guy will show up and give me a fight. So I'm excited for the opportunity and the test. I know it's going to be a test um, despite uh, records, despite um, the time off. Um, I know it would be a test as long as I go in there. Uh, humble and hungry, I believe I'll be victorious. Definitely, man. And is it has it been tough to find sponsors during this time? Because you know we have this uh, crazy thing going on in our lives, right? <laughs> Inflation and you know cost of living going up. Is that tough? Is that made that tougher? Yeah, uh, I haven't gone out of my way like this time. Like it's just schedules crazy just keeping track of when I'm going to get this workout in, when I'm going to mm-hmm. get my, I got classes to coach every day. It's just, um, mm-hmm. it's a lot of time management and looking for sponsors. It's, it's tedious, um, but it's awesome to find the right ones, get supporters. But yeah, this camp, uh, you know, I got my right. usual sponsor, but I haven't reached out for more as much. I'll put a post or two to see if anyone's biting, but no, it, it's definitely different nowadays with everything going on. For sure. And what can we expect in your fight uh, when you take on Jordan Wiggins? You know, obviously, you want to make it a lot more exciting than the last one. You want to make it more in your favor for, than the last one. But you, you got to be careful as well, I'm sure. Yes, sir. Uh, 100%. Um, with this fight, you can just expect me to go in there and enjoy myself. If I enjoy myself, it's a fun night. Wiggins, not sure what to expect. I do expect him to be aggressive. I expect him to bring it, man. And uh, that's exciting. That's exciting when I know a guy's going to do that. Um, a lot of guys wrestle me. So maybe we'll see some scrambling and uh, some wrestling. Um, obviously, I don't want to be held down for three rounds. I don't want to be, uh, you know, caught in the same things I've been caught in before. Like, uh, we'll be fighting at 155 pounds. My first okay. time being back in my weight class since 2017. Okay. And um, that's one thing that gives me confidence because when I fought uh, Beal, I took on, like I said before, I took mm-hmm. on a bigger guy, different weight class. Um, this time we're going back home and it's a homecoming for me. 155 is my, my weight. That's where I've been ranked in the top 10, top three in Illinois. And um Definitely not ranked now, but after this fight, I want to make a statement and uh, show people still here. Flying Brian is still here, and I've been working my butt off um, to show that I'm still here. So we'll see, but this is for my supporters, for everyone that's hung with me, um, for my team, and um, just excited to show off. We'll see what happens. I just got to be open to all uh, variables that could happen. It's a crazy sport, but I feel good and I feel ready. Sounds great, man. We can't wait to see it. Everybody check it out. August 20th. Get your tickets now for Real Cat Stadium. Elite fight night, title time. And Brian, Brian, Brian Higgins, we appreciate you being on the show, man. And anyone you'd like to thank or anything like the plug, go ahead. Uh, just thanks to everyone that's been supporting. Um, got tickets now. Um, you guys that are watching this, you guys already know what to do. Uh, tickets at Dominion Martial Arts. Uh, if you guys haven't been out to Dominion Martial Arts, we're on a sweet go. 
check us out and I uh, appreciate all my supporters and Sean, I appreciate you for um, having me on your show again. It's always. Hey. Uh, Anytime, brother. We appreciate you being on the Fight Leaport and best of luck.